Do you know that feeling that you get every year in late fall or early winter? You start getting a sore throat, a cough, a runny nose, and you start to wonder, is this just a cold that I'm going to get over in a few days, or is it something more serious that I need to see the doctor about? Today, I'd like to talk to you about what causes the common cold and how you can accurately identify the symptoms of a cold and know exactly what to look for. We'll also talk about how the flu or influenza infection is often different from the common cold. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley. The symptoms that occur in a common cold or upper respiratory tract infection are predictable and often occur in a sequence. If you are aware of this timeline, you will be better able to know what is coming and how long it will last. Most people with a common cold do not need to see a doctor, especially if your body is reacting in a way that I will, similar to the way I will outline below. If you start experiencing more severe symptoms, such as a fever lasting for more than a day or two, you may need to see a medical provider. So what do you need to know about the common cold? First, most colds are not due to the flu or influenza virus. Rhinoviruses actually cause 30 to 50% of cases and coronaviruses are the second most common culprit, accounting for 10 to 15% of colds. Influenza viruses only cause about 5 to 15% of upper respiratory infections. Second, the timeline of a typical cold goes like this. First, you breathe in the virus through contaminated air or you touch a contaminated surface. The virus is transferred from your hands to your mouth or nose. Second, the virus infects your upper airway. Third, your immune system reacts by activating macrophages, which are specialized disease-fighting white blood cells. These macrophages trigger the release of small proteins called cytokines. Other proteins, such as bradykinin, are also released. Bradykinin is a major trigger for early cold symptoms, such as sore throat and nasal congestion. Cytokines, such as interleukin-1, IL-1, and interleukin-6, IL-6, cause fever and chills in some people. And then your symptoms start. First, a sore throat. A sore throat is often the first symptom. The pain that you feel is due to the action of prostaglandins, which are hormones, and bradykinin on sensory nerve endings in your upper airway. The pain signals are then carried to your brain by cranial nerves in the area. And then you may develop some sneezing. Inflammation in the nose triggers the trigeminal nerve to activate the sneeze center in the brainstem. The brain then triggers the sneeze reflex. And then you may get a runny nose. The trigeminal nerve also stimulates glands to release a clear nasal discharge. As the cold develops over days, the color of the nasal discharge may turn yellow and then sometimes green. The color change is due to the presence of increasing numbers of disease-fighting white blood cells in the fluid. The color actually comes from a green protein called myeloperoxidase, which is contained in some of these cells. The color of the nasal discharge only tells you how much inflammation is going on in your body. This same rule applies to the sputum that you may be coughing up with the same infection. And then you may develop some sinus pain. The maxillary sinuses, which are on both sides of the nose, often become inflamed and painful after the nasal congestion starts. Pressure increases in the bony spaces of the sinuses 
and in the blood vessels near the sinuses to also become congested. The sinus pain often worsens when you lie down due to pressure changes in the surrounding blood vessels. And then you may develop some watery eyes. You actually have a small tunnel running from your nasal cavity and opening into the inner corner of each eye. This is known as a nasolacrimal duct. Well, this duct can become blocked due to swelling and congestion in the lining of the nasal cavity. This causes tears to accumulate in your eyes and you develop the watery eyes. Next, then comes the cough, which can last for more than three weeks. Nasal irritation can cause sneezing, but once that inflammation moves down the larynx and closer to the lungs, a cough reflex is triggered. Inflammation of the lower airway lining can stimulate the vagus nerve, which then transmits a signal to the cough center in the brainstem. Airway muscles contract and you cough. The cough reflex becomes overactive when you have a cold. When there's a lot of inflammation in the lower airway, you may also cough up yellow or green sputum. Unfortunately, a cough can sometimes last for several weeks after the other symptoms resolve. And as many as 50% of adults with a cold can also get muscle aches. The inflammatory cytokines we mentioned also can cause breakdown of skeletal muscle and can trigger the release of a hormone called prostaglandin E2. This hormone triggers peripheral pain receptors and muscle pain results. Next, you may have fever. Although fever in adults with a common cold doesn't happen quite as often. Fever is more likely to occur if you're infected with influenza virus or by a virus that your body has never seen before. This explains why infants are more likely to have a fever with any infection than adults. The common cold, usually caused by rhinovirus, is not typically associated with fever, although it can be. When you are infected, the cytokines send signals to the hypothalamus, which is a temperature control system in your brain. Your body temperature then increases and you may start shivering. This explains why you can get a fever and chills with an infection. At this point, there is no cure for the common cold, which can be due to one of several different viruses, which unfortunately mutate frequently. Although the efficacy of the influenza vaccine changes every year, it usually decreases your chance of getting infected with the influenza virus or the flu, which can cause serious symptoms. I definitely recommend getting the flu shot every year. Unfortunately, there's no vaccine for rhinovirus or coronavirus yet, meaning that there is no shot that will prevent you from getting the common cold. This also means that you can easily still get a cold after getting the flu shot but your chances of actually getting an influenza infection will probably be lower. However, if your symptoms are similar to what I previously talked about, there is a good chance that you have just a rhinovirus or coronavirus infection that will get better over time without any specific treatment. Sometimes you just have to wait for your own immune system to fight the infection, which typically takes from seven to 10 days.